Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a bunch of DIYs for you, so let's not waste any time and let's get to crafting. Okay, y'all, I have 24 Dollar Tree and some not so Dollar Tree DIYs in this video, so buckle up and let's get started. So, we're gonna start off with this sh little shelf thing that I made a while back. I feel like this is my love child and my favorite project that I have ever made, so I definitely wanted to include it in this compilation. But to start off, I took 12 of these crates from Dollar Tree. I glued them all together, four across and then three rows down, if that makes any sense. I clamped them together, and then to cover up those holes, I took these jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. I laid them across the bottom, measured them, and then I cut them down. So for the bottom of these, the only ones that, or the amount that would fit were two, and then I had to cut down another one for the middle piece because I tried like smaller popsicle sticks, medium, large, none of them would work. So I did just take like the large popsicle sticks, I measured the middle part, and then if you cut these with scissors, they're going to like splinter, but if you cut them with a utility knife, they cut so smoothly and nicely. So that is how I ended up cutting the middle pieces. Once I had all those pieces cut, I, obviously cut all of the boxes at once that way all I had to do was glue them down so I did glue them down with a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of wood glue to ensure that they would last a long time as well as hold quickly so before I go ahead and glue them down, I take some large stir sticks that I get from Home Depot or Lowe's for 98 cents a pack. I measure across where the um, crates meet each other and then I cut down three of those pieces in that size. Once I had those pieces cut, then we're going to glue the bottoms down of or bottoms down to the crates and like I said I just did that with some actually I think I just used wood glue I thought I used hot glue and wood glue but it looks like I just used wood glue next I glue the front pieces on with wood glue and hot glue I guess that's why I thought that I glued the bottom pieces down with that and then I just use a little tiny level to make sure that they are nice and straight um, if you guys have been around you know that I have OCD and when things are crooked it literally drives me insane so I wanted these to be as straight as possible now on the top I wanted to cover those holes up because you could see the light coming through. If that doesn't bother you, then I wouldn't worry about this step. But for me, I definitely wanted it covered. So I just took those jumbo popsicle sticks once again. I measured them to fit the top and then I glued them down with some hot glue. Next, I flip it over and take all of the stickers off of the back and then originally I started out with early American stain I believe this is but it just wasn't dark enough for me and my decor is darker so I did stain the entire thing with Jacobian and then I stained the front with the early American I believe that's what it is you guys don't quote me but I will try to leave that in the description box once I had it all stained then I go in with my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and dry brush all the way around this obviously dry brushing is optional if you don't like it then you don't have have to do it that's the beauty of DIY you can change up anything that I make to suit your decor color whatever so anyway once I dry brushed then I got these label holders from Amazon they are linked in my Amazon store in the description box and they are fail fairly cheap <laughs> here we go you guys they are fairly cheap 
and I believe like 20 or 50 come in a pack so you can do multiple projects with these but I just line them up in the middle of each box on that front piece and then I screw them down easy peasy lemon squeezy and then that was it for this you can make your own decor to go in here but I will show you guys how I made all the decor that I put in this shelf because I just love these little minis so much okay friends so I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills, deepen passions you may already have, and get lost in creativity. Right now I'm currently taking a few courses like watercoloring and hand lettering essentials for beginners. A lot of you guys have reached out to me lately and asked me about how to start a YouTube channel and things like that. So I have personally really been enjoying this class, YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with Marquez Brownlee. The classes are really short and to the point, but you feel like you are right in front of the instructor. They're very short classes and they're very easy to follow. And I just think that this would be an amazing resource for some of you out there. But this is not the only class they have. They have tons of amazing genres and niches. So definitely check this out. So Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they're consistently adding new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Plus, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and I thought that you guys might want to know that if you click the link in my description box, if you click the title of the video, a box will appear. That is the description box. The first thousand people to click that link will get a free premium trial. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Okay, for the first little mini decor piece, I take eight Jenga blocks and I glue them together with some wood glue. I put four at the bottom and four on top. I put them up against a level so that way I can make sure they are nice and straight before I go ahead and glue the other four on. Now, sometimes I work like while this is drying I'll work on something else so while that's drying I take a skewer and a little foam ball from Dollar Tree and I take some green Arteza paint I paint that little ball and then I take this greenery that I got from Walmart honestly I wish that I had different greenery at this time I have made a little mini topiary a few videos back and I do love the way that one turned out much better but at the time this was all I had so I just went with it so I just clip a bunch of these picks off or little pieces off of a pick I should say and then I stuck them all the way around the foam ball and then I cut them down because I didn't think that it looked right um, as long as the pieces were and then I stuck a dowel where I had the skewer. I usually, I just used the skewer to hold the ball so that I could paint it. And then I replaced it with a small dowel. I stuck it in a little mini pot and then put some rocks around it. I then glued on top of the rocks to make sure that it would stay nicely. And then I put some reindeer moss at the top just to finish it off and make it look more high end. Once I had all of the reindeer moss on there, then I do just trim the excess again to make it look more uniform. And then that was it for that, you guys. Actually, I do believe that I dry brushed around the little mini pot. You guys know that I love dry brushing. I think that it just gives such a farmhouse touch and makes it look old and weathered. But I am aware that not all of you guys like that. So once again, when I'm dry brushing, if you don't like the dry brushing, then just leave that out of your project.
I then took another mini terracotta pot and heavily dry brushed the inside and the outside of this one and then I set it aside. Next, I take the sticker off of the bottom of this little mini jar that I believe I got at Michael's for a dollar and some change, and I gave that one good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I set that aside to dry, and I had this little home candle from Dollar Tree, but the color did not fit my decor, so I did go over that with some mineral Waverly chalk paint, as well as a little tiny bud vase from Dollar Tree. I painted that with the mineral as well. Next, I took that little mini sign with the blocks that we made and I give front and back a, I think I did two coats of the white Waverly chalk paint just to make sure that none of that wood would show through. Looking back now, I wish that I would have left some of that wood showing through, but I end up distressing it anyway, so no big deal. I also took this little potted succulent that I got from Dollar Tree. I took the succulent out and dry brushed around the edges of that little pot. I set that aside and I took one of those little, I got those jars back in Halloween. I think they were like potion bottles and I gave that a nice coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I also forgot to mention that I did put a piece of lamb's ear into that mini pot and then that one was done so once i had all my stuff painted then i go in with my antique wax and a mini chip brush and i start by distressing this little white sign and i also had a little tiny windmill that i believe i got from target a few christmases back and i just distressed that with some antique wax as well so I've had these calendars for a while now and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them but I figured that if I flip them around and cut off the little tiny picture then I could stick it on this sign. So I did cut that out and put it down with a glue stick. Now looking back I wish that I would have put it down with some Mod Podge or some spray glue so it that's totally up to you but it it did ripple over time so i would use something that's going to hold it much better next i took these little galvanized pieces that i took off of a sign a long time ago this is exactly why you never throw away these kinds of things this ended up being perfect for this little decor piece so i just cut it down to size leaving a little bit that would go around the sides that way they would glue down nicely so i glued them down to the top and the bottom and then once again i distressed it with that antique wax that was it for this one look how cute this is you guys i don't know what it is about minis that i just love so much let me know in the comments down below if you like minis or not Moving on to the next little decor piece, I take this white little pot and I distress it with that same brush and antique wax. I set that aside as well and I move on to another decor piece. So I have these little mini transfers from Chalk Couture 
and I did end up making another little sign with four Jenga blocks I believe it was four glued them together painted it white and I took two different transfers I transferred one on the jar and one on the little sign with some black chalk paste and then I pulled it away and revealed that's what I love about chalk couture when you pull that transfer away look how amazing this ends up looking Next, I take this home candle and a chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I heavily distress this to bring that word home out. And then once I distressed it, I took some jute, I put a bead of hot glue on the back and then I wrapped some jute around the neck of this little candle and then I secured it in the back with some hot glue again. For this little bud vase, all I did was distress the edges, I glued some jute around the neck for this as well, and then all I did was just stick some greenery and some cotton stems in here. You can leave this as is or stick greenery in there like I did. The possibilities are endless and it's totally up to you what you do with yours. I then distress this little potion bottle or jar, whatever you want to call it, the same exact way as I did the bud vase, but I did leave the jute off of the neck of this one because I did want all of these items to look different. Last but not least, I take a piece of jute. I put some painter's tape on the end so that it's easy to string these beads through. And I pull out my 14 millimeter unfinished wood beads, which are linked in my Amazon store as well. I then string one bead on, I tie a knot, string another bead and tie a knot, and so on and so forth until I have about 9 or 10 beads on the strand. And then I just tie off the end to make sure none of them would fall off. I then just stuck it in the white little bucket and that was it for this project you guys like i said in the beginning this project was my love child this project was the start of something amazing on my channel i feel like this project brought my creativity out more than anything before and really jump-started this new found love and inspiration for bigger pieces and bigger projects so I'm really grateful to this project I know that sounds funny but it really has opened the doors to so many more amazing projects so per usual in all my videos let me know in the comments down below which project is your all-time favorite in this entire video
so if you're new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love for you to stick around. Become part of the family by clicking that subscribe button. And then you just want to tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. I see that 60% of you watch and you're not subscribed. So you might as well just become part of the family. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. So one more thing, also follow me on Instagram. I get a little bit more personal over there. All that information is in the description box as well as all my Facebook groups and all the ways to connect with me. Moving on to the next project, I take these beware signs that I got from Dollar Tree back around Halloween time. I love these long signs, you guys, so anytime I see them, I literally pick up like as many as I possibly can, obviously leaving some for some others, but I do go to multiple stores and pick up a few here and there. So I cut down six of them. I measure how much space that I need taken off, and then I take off some from each end. You can easily cut these down with a utility knife. All you have to do is score them a few times, and then the end pops right off. But I do put the beware sign like towards me and then I glue them together in the seams with some large popsicle sticks. I then take some yard sticks and some large stir sticks because they're super duper cheap and then I measure out a frame and then a piece going down the middle. Once I have all those pieces cut then I take another yard stick and I measure where they need to be cut for cross pieces kind of like a barn door and you guys I don't do exact measurements I literally just hold these pieces up to the corners. I mark where it needs to be cut and then I cut it that way. Some people do angles and measure and all this stuff that I honestly don't understand. So this is the easiest way that I knew how to do it. And then I do the same exact thing for the cross pieces. Now I made a diagram for how they laid down because if you don't know where the pieces lay, then when you go back to put it together, it's not going to go together correctly. So I do number the back of these pieces and then like I said, made a diagram for myself. Once I had that done, I pulled it all off of the sign, I sanded down all of the rough edges, and then I stained all my pieces with the Kona stain, and it has polyurethane in it, and you guys, I love my Jacobian stain, but it just takes forever to dry, and then when it is finally dry, it still leaves kind of like this residue on your fingers, and when I'm DIY. When I am DIYing, sorry you guys, I'm probably going to trip over my words a lot in this video because it's an hour and 32 minutes long, but just bear with me. So, like I said, when I'm DIYing, like, I want to get done as quick as possible just because you guys don't understand or see it, but I film over the course of like five days. Then the next day I have to edit and then the next day I have to upload. So my whole week is editing, uploading, and DIYing. So to have my pieces take forever to dry is kind of a pain. So when I can get away with using the stain with polyurethane in it, I do because it literally takes like 10 to 20 minutes to dry. So anyway, I just wanted to explain that a little bit in case you have trouble with your stain drying. Just go to Walmart or your local hardware store and just pick up some stain that's either water-based or that has polyurethane in it. So while those pieces are drying, I take this large farmhouse tile transfer from Chalk Couture. If you guys want to learn more about Chalk Couture, just leave it in the comments down below 
or shoot me a message on Facebook or an email and I would be happy to give you more information. But I basically just randomly put my chalk paste all the way around this transfer and then I squeegee it off and I do that for both sides. So while that is drying, I take some jars. Now in the original video, I will leave the link to each video in the cards in the right hand corner, but I did stain two jars in this beautiful blue color, but it didn't fit my decor. So I did just show in this video, my jars that I painted with the mineral color. I did paint two jars of each color and then I distress the mineral color with my sanding, my mini finger sander, which is linked in my Amazon store. And I also distress it with some white Waverly chalk paint. I also distress the other blue jars with some white Waverly chalk paint as well. For the blue jars, you can't distress it with a sanding uh, block because the stain is on the inside of the jar rather than on the outside of the jar now I do love the way that these look I did just want to show you how they looked I love it it's different it's really beautiful the way they turned out but like I said it just didn't fit my decor I just wanted to give you guys some different options because I know that not everybody likes the neutral farmhouse colors so once I was done distressing these jars, I go in with my jute, I put a bead of hot glue in the back and then wrap it around and then I secure it in, that, in the back again with some hot glue. Also added bows to all four of the jars, obviously that's optional as well. So once I finish my jars, then it's time to put this all together. So I pulled out my diagram. I put these in the places that I had wrote down and then I glued all my pieces down. Once I had all my pieces glued, then I go in with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I distress this wood. Now I wish that I wouldn't have distressed this you guys. I think that it looks beautiful just like this. I absolutely love dry brushing, but for this particular piece, I do wish that I didn't dry brush it. But once I was done the video, I did go back in and just sand some of that white down, and I love the way that it turned out. So coming up to the end of this project, once I was done dry brushing, then all there was to do was put the jars on. Now, if you're just doing one color of the jars, then I would secure it with some E6000 or some Gorilla um, Super Glue and some hot glue. But because I wanted to be able to change these jars out, I just took a command strip and I put it down in the middle of the X and then I placed my jars on the command strip once again, that way I could switch these out. I also added some greenery to the jars and I absolutely love the way that this turned out, you guys. I have it in my living room above my little mantle and I know you guys will let me know in the comments down below which jars do you like? Do you like the blue jars or the mineral color jars? For the next project, this is a really simple one, but I love the results. So once again, I take these beware signs and I cut off the ends. I believe I cut about six inches off of each end. I used a utility knife and I just scored it a few times, as I mentioned before, and then they just popped right off. If they don't pop off, then you can go from behind and just score that paper because essentially that's all it is where the design is. It's just like this really thick paper and then it will pop right off. 
so to attach them once again i used large popsicle sticks and i glued where the beware part is i flipped it around and i used some lightweight spackling to fill in any holes and that middle part i didn't want it to be obvious that this was two signs put together I then gave it a distressed coat of some white Waverly chalk paint and I went on my computer and printed out the word farmhouse. I also printed off this little in a different font and I transferred both of those on with my Arteza graphite paper. Once I had my image transferred on, then I do go in with a level and just draw two lines on either side of this little and I um, just freehanded an arrow. I wanted it to say this little farmhouse and have an arrow going towards the right. Once I did that, then I went over all of the wording with my Arteza black paint pen. I love these paint pens because they're so creamy. They also come with changeable tips. So if one of your tips gets ruined or dried out, all you have to do is just replace it with the tip that they give you. And they do give you multiple tips in each box of their paint pens, which is an amazing feature that I appreciate. Once I had all my wording, uh, went over with a paint pen then for the O in the farmhouse I wanted this to be a bit different so I had this cow transfer from chalk couture that I just originally used two different colors on but I didn't like the way that it looked so I just went right back over it with my black chalk paste I then distress it with some distressing ink and a blending brush to finish off this project and this is another project that I have in my kitchen and I just love the way that it turned out. For the next project, we're going to make these little farmhouse, I don't even know what you guys want to call them, farmhouse uh, lanterns, I guess you can say. So I take these little candle holders from Dollar Tree, I glue the black ones together with some hot glue, and then I paint the seam with some Ink Waverly chalk paint, and then I distress them both with the opposite color. So for the white one, I distress with ink, and for the black one, I distress with white. Next, I take these little candle holders, again from Dollar Tree, I use my blow dryer to get the sticker off, and then I take this ribbon that I once again got from Dollar Tree, I glue it around towards the top just to give it like I guess you can say to give it some uh, character I couldn't think of the word <laughs> and then I make two simple bows and I glue them to the middle of that ribbon I did that for both just to make them look uniform I then had these little lanterns that I got back at Christmas time. I took the handle off of them and then I painted the tops of these little lanterns black. Don't forget that you do need to paint the underside of these. That way when they are sitting in your candle holder, then you can't see that gold showing through. If you have gold in your decor, then you can skip this step. But for me, I definitely wanted to cover that gold color. I then go in with some white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush and I just distress the tops of these lanterns. 
once I distressed the tops of these then all I did was put a few of the little wicker balls that I got from Dollar Tree in the bottom of these candle holders I did try to just put the lantern on the tops of the candle holders but I felt that it was just missing a little something so I put those at the bottom and then I glued these little lanterns to the tops and look how cute these are you guys this is another project that I have up in my home and I love the way that they turned out plus they were super duper easy to make so moving on to the next project I had a bunch of large stir sticks that I really needed to use up so I knew that I had the perfect project in mind so I start by measuring out three different sizes we're gonna be making little crates out of these and the crates actually ended up being really nice and sturdy and they were super duper easy to make I will leave all the measurements in the description box because I can't remember off the top of my head the exact measurements but I do cut longer pieces for the front and shorter pieces for the side and then once I had those cut I kind of lay them out and measure for the bottom pieces and then cut those as well whatever measurements that you take you do just want to double it up if you're going to make two crates or triple it for three crates I then cut down square dowels that way the corners have something to glue to also making these nice and sturdy and then once I had everything cut then I do go in with my finger sander and I just sand down all the edges and the parts that splintered so that way when I paint these then they paint really nicely once I had them all sanded down then I do go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I paint every single piece of these I also sanded down four yardsticks and then painted those white as well you're also going to need two pieces to go in between the yardstick because that is what we're going to glue our crate to. So to assemble these crates, like I said before, they're super duper easy. All I did was start by laying the longer piece down. I take my square dowels and I glue them to each corner. I then flip that around and I put the bottom piece on next with some wood glue and hot glue. That way I can put the middle piece on nice and evenly. So I assembled all four sides and then I go in on the sides of each. So I take the smaller pieces, I glue those down to the sides on each side. And then once I did that, then I take the other longer side and glue that down at the same time so for this step you want to work very quickly because once you get it down in there you're not going to be able to fool with it if that makes any sense so once I had the main part of the crate assembled then I flip it around I mean really the top and the bottom are the same but I just kind of look to see like which side looks better I guess you can say and then I use that for my bottom piece so I do the same exact thing I start with my wood glue and hot glue and I glue that edge I glue down the first piece and then glue down the opposite side once I have the opposite side glued down then I glue the middle pieces again so that way we can make sure that they are nice and evenly I repeat all those steps once again to create a second crate next I lay my yardsticks down and I put the cross pieces down on top of them I make sure that the crates are going to fit on the cross pieces and then I glue the cross pieces down and glue the other yard stick on top of that. I did this for a few reasons. So I did this for the look of it so that way the middle pieces, the edges are kind of hidden. But I also did it for stability. That way 
the top and bottom piece are sandwiched together holding these cross pieces down because the crates are not really heavy but they're not light either so I wanted to make sure that this would hold my crates very nicely. To glue these crates down, once again, I used hot glue and wood glue, and then I just lined up that crate perfectly to the cross piece. To ensure that these hold nice and tight, I do just clamp them down for a while. Like I said, I didn't want these to go anywhere. So originally, For the top of this I made this sign but after putting it all together and distressing with my antique wax I just didn't like the wording so I ended up changing that sign out. That's why I didn't show you how I made that one. So to make the new one what I did was I took a sign from Dollar Tree and some lightweight spackling. I filled those holes in and once those holes were dried then I gave the sign a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I wanted this to appear as if it was three pieces of wood put together so all I do to make this look like wood is to run my knife down the parts where the edges already look like wood and I just score it maybe two times and then it gives the appearance like it's wood. I then printed off this sign. I do have a free printable for this and I will leave it in the description box but I just use my Arteza graphite paper. I transfer on the image and then I go over it with my Arteza paint pen and then of course I distress it with some of my antique wax as well as my distressing ink. Once I had this sign completed, I did also draw a few little dots on the ends of the wood to make it, or on the ends of the sign to make it look like wood even more than it already did. And then I just used some hot glue to glue it to the top. I also did make labels for the front. One said veggies, one said fruit, and I just freehanded that wording on there. And then I hung it up on my wall in my kitchen. And look how amazing this turned out, you guys. It literally did not take a lot of money to make this, and it was super duper easy. Now, I know a lot of you guys leave in the comments that you think that certain things are too hard and that you can't do it, but I promise you, if you just put your mind to it, you can do anything. Moving on to the next project, this one is super simple. I take these half planners from Dollar Tree and I cut them off of the backing. I then take my letter transfers from Chalk Couture. I will leave all the Chalk Couture stuff in the description box. Anything that I use that I have, I can link, I will leave down in the description box. If you just click the title, a box will appear and that is where all the information will be. If you guys hear the baby or Sophia, they're right here with me um, having a good time playing. So I'm sorry for all the noise, but I'm a mom and it just is what it is. So anyway, once I have basil, thyme, and oregano transferred onto each, I go in with my detail tool and I just clean up the edges that bled through. I then take some floral foam that I got from Dollar Tree and some different greenery that I got from Dollar Tree, Walmart, Hobby Lobby. Um, I get an array of things from an array of places. So I have all this stuff in my arsenal of cracks, craft supplies. Oh my gosh, you guys, not crack supplies. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> in my craft supplies. And then I just... Um, put the corresponding greenery that I think looks most like the herb in the pots and then that was it for that one these look so high-end they look like something Ray Dunn would make and I just love the way that they turned out 
Moving on to the next project, this is another one of my favorites. I take one of these trays from Dollar Tree and I give it a good coat of the chalkboard paint that I also got from Dollar Tree. I then take a large popsicle stick that I got from Walmart and I measure out how many pieces I need to cover the bottom of this because I wanted the bottom of the tray to look like shiplap. I then took three of those, I think they're, they go on like the ends of dowels, and I painted three of them black. And then I took these jars from Dollar Tree as well, and I had three different, or two different kinds. Two of them, my friend Nicole from the Weeks Nest uses all the time. Thanks to her, I seen these, or else I would have never found them, because I don't look in the glass section very often, but I take, um, two of the jars with the patterns on them one i painted with the white waverly chalk paint and the other one i mixed some of waverly's moss and white together because i wanted this green color but i just didn't want it to be as bright as it is coming right out of the paint container so i did just make a lighter green and painted that one with it as well for the middle container, I think it's like a candy jar or you can use it for many different things. I did paint that one with my mineral color chalk paint. When I put the bottom of these pieces down on our tray, I realized that it did need another like half a piece of a popsicle stick. So once again, I used my utility knife to cut those down and I did stain those with my Kona stain and then I glued them down to the bottom of our tray. I then distressed the little knobs for the containers and then I took some chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree. I painted the edges with our chalkboard paint and then I also created free printables for the coffee, sugar, and tea signs and then I cut them out and glued them down to our chalkboard tags. Next, I use my mini finger sander to distress them, really focusing on that design. I wanted that to really pop off of the jar. I love the way that it looked. And then once I was done distressing, I glued some jute around the neck of all three of the jars. Now, in order to attach these labels, I did want them to look like they were like hanging off of here. So I did just glue a piece of jute to the back of it and then I tied it around the neck of these. And I also glued down the little ends of the dowels on top of each jar. I also distressed the top of each jar with a very little bit of white Waverly chalk paint. And then to really make the label stand up, I just put a tiny bead of hot glue on the back and then glued it directly to the jar. Next, I take my white Waverly chalk paint and my mini chip brush, and I just distress the top of this little tray, focusing on the edges and the wooden pieces at the bottom. Look how amazing this turned out, you guys. I am absolutely love in love with this project, and I know you guys will let me know in the comments down below what you think. For the next project, I take nine of these square mirrors. You can find them in the candle section at Dollar Tree, and I start by taking all of the feet off of them. They have like these little foam feet, so that way they don't scratch your table, but I wanted these to lay flat on my foam board, so I did remove all of them. Next, I lay them down. I lay them down on my foam board to kind of see how much space I wanted. And originally I left about an inch at the top, bottom, and sides. But once I cut it, I realized that I just wanted the foam board to be flush with the ends of the mirrors. So I ended up just cutting that down and then I went in with my finger sander and just sanded those edges to make sure they were nice and smooth. 
I then glued all my mirrors down to the foam board and took another yardstick that I had sanded down and I measured out a frame. I laid it out and I marked it because I'm going to put these at a 45 degree angle almost like a picture frame now you don't have to do this you can just butt these right up against each other but you guys know i'm extra i always like to go that extra mile to make this look high end and nice and finished once i had my frame cut then i clamped it down to the mirror that way i could measure the middle and the cross pieces so i measured the long pieces first and then i laid out the cross pieces measured those as well and cut everything when i take this off i once again mark the back so that i know exactly where each piece will lay when i go to put this back on and then i stain them with my kona stain Next, I take a piece of newspaper and some window cleaner and I just really clean those mirrors nicely before we put the frame on because once you put the frame on, you can definitely clean the mirrors, but it is a little bit more tricky. So once I had it cleaned, then I lay out the frame first and I glued that together before I glued anything onto the mirrors. I figured that it would be much easier to get this laid on there nice and square if the frame was together first, but I do recommend to just glue the frame down to the mirrors first because it took a really long time to dry and I was like, okay, what do I do now while this is drying? So definitely just glue it right down onto the mirrors. Just make sure that it is even before you glue anything down. I then distress the cross pieces and then I just glue the cross pieces down as well as the frame. I found that the easiest way to do this, at first I was gluing straight to the mirror, but because mirrors and like galvanized metal, all those kinds of things, the glue dries really quickly, I guess because it's cold. I'm not really too sure of the science behind it, but I do know that it it dries super quick so I would definitely recommend to put your glue directly on your wood and then glue it to the mirror. So once I was finished putting all of this together I realized that the edges were driving me nuts so all I did was take some square dowels I measured around the frame and then I cut the pieces down so that you could have a nice frame in the back as well that way if you have it on a wall like where you can kind of see the back then you're not going to see the foam board and the mirrors you'll just see this wood. Once I had them cut, then I uh, stained that wood as well, glued that down, and then last but not least, I take this farmhouse handle that I got from Home Depot. I think they're called cup handles. Don't quote me on that, but they did have screws, but they were way too long. I painted the cup handle white distressed it with my antique wax and then I just glued it right down since I'm only using this for decor I'm not going to be actually using that handle I screwed a very small screw to the top you don't want it too big because it will go through to your mirror and it's not going to be good if you try to drill that mirror it will crack so I definitely just took a small screw because I want to be able to hang a wreath from this and then I also had these corner brackets I also painted those white or actually I think I spray painted these white I glued these down as well if the screw holes bother you then you can uh, like put gems on there or a really really tiny screw it's totally up to you but the holes didn't bother me so I left them as is and then I distressed them with my antique wax as well you can also see my little helper right there she is doing her own thing she loves to be up here crafting with me and I love it as well and then that was it for this you guys look how amazing this look looks i swear it's like out of a magazine sometimes i just can't believe that i'm the one that makes these things um 
like I said in the first project, that first project really brought my creativity out and I just love the things that I have been coming up with lately. So I wanted to thank Natalie, Tanya, and someone times three for buying me a coffee. If you enjoy my work and you think that I do a good job and would like to buy me a coffee, then go in the description box and you can find a link there. I appreciate every single one of you, whether you buy a coffee or not. I just love you guys so much. And you can always support your favorite YouTuber by watching the ads 20 to 30 seconds, clicking on the ads. There's so many different things you can do liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, you don't have to monetize, monetarily support them. You can support them by doing those simple things. So anyway, moving on, we're going to make those little farmhouse shelves or shutter shelves, I should say. So I cut down two of the large stir sticks right where the handle is. I then took these little um, longer wooden plaques from Dollar Tree or wooden planks from Dollar Tree and I glue those to the ends after I painted all of them white. I then glued one at the top, one at the bottom and then to get the second one even I lay the stir stick down, both of the stir sticks down and then line up the longer plank with the first one that we did. I don't know if I'm making any sense here. If I'm not, I'm sorry you guys. And then I just glue the bottom piece to the second one as well. I then take, I believe I painted 30 large popsicle sticks white just so that way I would have enough. And then I put these and I glue them down on an angle so that they look like shutter pieces. Every few I will pick it up to make sure that it's even in the front and while the glue is drying I kind of pull on the back of it so that it stands up just like a um, shutter and then I end up cutting some pieces of the large popsicle sticks and then kind of wedging them on the top of these not far enough where you could see it from the front but just enough that the these would stand up I feel like they look more realistic when the popsicle sticks are kind of on an angle but it's hard to get them to glue down right like that so I just did my best to hold them up while they were drying and then um, I reinforce it to stand up with a little tiny piece of popsicle stick and I make sure to glue glue those down that way they don't go anywhere and once again every so often I will flip it over to make sure that the spaces are even to create the shelves I grab a pack of these smaller stir sticks and I lay it across our little shutter and then I cut them down to size with my mitre, mitre shears for each shelf I'm going to be using four of these pieces and then I just stand this up to make sure that the shelf will be big enough. In order to glue these together I cut down a piece, I cut down a few pieces of the large popsicle sticks and then I just ad adhere it with some hot glue on either side. Shoo you guys, I love to talk, but to talk for an hour and a half straight, whew. <laughs> Sorry if I'm like tripping over my words, but it's definitely a lot of talking. So anyway, when my shelves are all put together, then I take two dowel rods that I got from Dollar Tree and the shelves and I paint front and back of the shelves white as well as the dowel rods. I then just distress them with my antique wax as well as the shutters themselves. I also did want to mention for those of you that like the dry brushing, I start off with a very light coat and then I build from there because you can always add more distressing 
but it's hard it's harder to take it off so always start very lightly and then work your way to a darker distress if that's what you like for these in particular i went darker in some places and lighter in others so i figured that i would just mention that next i glue down the dowel rods to the middle of our shutters this is going to act as the part where you pull the shutter up and down obviously it's not going to work <laughs> but I did just want to mention that as well so next we're going to attach our shelves to this so I lay down my uh, shutter and I wanted to add chains to these just to make it look more realistic plus it's going to help hold up our shelves now I was shocked at how good these held together um just with hot glue and wood glue but I just wanted to be sure that they would stay together obviously you can't put a 20 pound weight on these but they do hold a pretty good amount so I just took these um, C hooks that I had and I kind of laid the chain out that I got from Dollar Tree and I kind of figured out how big I wanted my chain and then depending upon how big I wanted it then I screwed in the C hooks um, one on each side and then one to each corner of the shelf. I then painted those white and distressed those with the antique wax as well just to make sure that they blended in really nicely and then we're going to attach our shelf. So in order to attach this what I did was I ran a bead of hot glue onto the shelf and I ran a bead of wood glue onto the shutter. I didn't mean to say shelf. I ran a bead of hot glue on the shutter and a bead of the wood glue on the shutter as well because like I always say the wood glue is going to make sure that it holds for a long time and the hot glue is going to hold it immediately. I then just stand the shutter up and I glue it down to the shelf. So in order to reinforce these, I flip this around to the back and I take a Jenga block and put that on either side of our shelf. And this is just going to make sure that it holds even better. So for the chains, what I did was take seven links from the pot holder chains from Dollar Tree. You get them in like the spring summer section and I removed two of the links and flipped them around. That way each side could hold on to the C hooks. If that makes no sense, you can see what I'm doing here, but they were really easy to take apart and then I just added them to our shelves. Next, I painted the chains white and distressed them with the antique wax as well. And then you guys, literally, that was it for these. I put some decor on them and I love the way that these turned out. These are another item that I have up in my house. And I just love that you can take really inexpensive items and turn them into such high-end decor. Like if I seen these in Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby, I would pick them up in a heartbeat. So I'm definitely loving the way that they turned out. Moving on to another fan favorite. I think I'm going to call this video Dollar Tree and more fan favorites. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but I take two of these beware signs and once again, I glue them together with some large popsicle sticks. Once I had them glued together, then I flipped it around and I gave it or first I took my lightweight spackling and I filled in all the um, holes as well as that middle part. 
Once that dried, then I sanded down the excess and I gave it a coat of like a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take my general store transfer from Chalk Couture, which sadly, you guys, it still has not come back in stock. The shipping has been so crazy lately, especially with a ship getting stuck in the canal, and it's just been a struggle to get the items back in stock, but I promise whoever asked for me to let them know when this comes back in stock, I promise you that you will be the first to know. So I take my general store transfer. I fuzz it really nicely. This is a really big transfer, you guys. So for the bigger transfers, for those of you that either want to get chalk couture or have it, the easiest way to do these is to flip it around and pull the backing off of the transfer rather than the other way around. And then put the fuzzing cloth on top, rather the transfer onto the fuzzing cloth. The fuzzing cloth helps you to get some fuzz on there. That way when you pull it up from your project, you don't stretch and ruin your transfer. Um, so you want to fuzz uh, probably like 10 times. Once you have your image transferred on, then all you're going to do is pull back one side very slowly, making sure not to uh, stretch your transfer. I then just take my antique wax as well as my distressing ink and I just heavily heavily distress this sign because I wanted it to look old and vintage and weathered and then look how amazing this sign turned out another one of my favorites as well as your favorites and you guys seem to have the same taste as me which is pretty amazing so anyway moving on to the next project we're going to make this little birdhouse shelf now a subscriber of mine had seen a shelf that i have in my kitchen and asked me to recreate it i know that this is not a project for everybody but you guys would be surprised what you can do when you just put your mind to it. So I took about 15 of these shelves from Dollar Tree. They're the new floating shelves. A lot of you guys asked me for the SKU number and um, I honestly, I gave it out, but nobody can find them on the website. You can try the Dollar Tree D stash group on Facebook. A lot of times when I'm looking for something that I can't find, they will find it and ship it to me. So anyway, I took all of these out of the package and I cut off the jute hanger. I then measured each part. This shelf has three different parts. It has like a house shelf, it has a flat shelf in the middle, and then it has a square shelf on the right hand side. So I measured out all my pieces and it's going to take two pieces for each side. So I cut all those pieces and then for the longer shelf I cut that down and then I filled in the holes with some wood putty. Prior to filling these holes, I did glue all the side pieces together. So basically all the pieces that are going to create one side I glued together, if that makes any sense at all. Once my wood putty was dry, this stuff dries super quick, you guys. It was literally drying on my putty knife as I was using it, but I did just sand that down smooth and then vacuum away all the dust. Now it's time to put our pieces together. Now, my husband and I cut these on an angle. You don't have to do that, but you guys know. I know I say it all the time, but it's the truth. I'm extra. So you don't have to cut them on an angle. Just butt them together. The only one that I would recommend to cut on an angle is the roof piece. But again, you can always just fill it in with wood putty if you don't want to do that. 
So this was the week that my brother, my husband lost his brother and when he cut these pieces for me, he cut them wrong. So they didn't fit together that nicely, but it was no big deal. I wasn't upset. Things happen. My projects do not always go off without a hitch. In fact, a lot of them, I run into issues because I'm figuring out how to put this together while I'm putting together rather than just watching a tutorial and putting together. I actually have to figure it all out. So sometimes, most of the time actually, I do run into issues, but it's fine. It's no big deal. All I did was fill in all the cracks with my wood putty and you can't ever even tell that they didn't fit together nicely. Once I had that done and sand it down, then I'm going to measure out the back pieces for the house and the square. So I just lay large stir sticks up against the back and then I mark where the first one will be and I cut that down. I then mark where the second one will be and cut it down and so on and so forth. That way I have a nice frame for the back. I do that for both pieces, the square and the house, like I said. And then once I have them all cut and sand it down, then I paint them with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I just brush my dust off with a cheap brush from Walmart, and then I give these all I give all my pieces a coat of white Waverly chalk paint, and I do a distress coat once again, so that way I don't have to distress it um, further when I'm done. To put the frame of this together, I wanted this to be really sturdy, so my husband came up with a really good idea. I laid out some square dowels, and then for the cross pieces to hold the shelves up, he came up with a genius idea. So, like I said, we have the two longer square dowels. Now, for the pieces that are going to hold the shelves up like i said what we did was measure them to be perfect and then he drilled holes stuck skewers in the holes where the square dowels are going to be and then he drilled holes into the other side and then slid the dowels on there so basically we created wooden dowels like if you've ever put furniture together or like cube organizers they come with square dowels for stability and that's basically what we made with skewers and it literally worked so well i was so impressed with this idea when me and him work together we come up with some great things and i just love him for that so Anyway, what I did was we put two of the cross dowels on the ends and then wherever the other pieces were, because I want to put a frame around each of these pieces, we put three. So basically, next to the house was two dowel rods. Then on the other side where the longer shelf will be, there's going to be three dowels again three dowels on the other side and then two dowels next to the square if that makes any sense at all so i cut down the longer dowels to fit perfectly and then i moved all of the pieces off and we didn't put the skewer dowels in all of them just on the ones where the bigger decor pieces we're going to lay so where the house was and then where the square was on either side we did use the skewer dowel i don't know if it's a hundred percent necessary but for me this is a heavier piece so it gave me peace of mind knowing that this was not going to fall apart next i'm going to um put the frame around each of these so what I did was I took my square dowels and I just held them up to each side and then I marked it and I cut them down now I will leave the angles in the description box because when I did this I had to cut it several times to get the perfect angle but now that I know them I can let you guys know and if you do this project then it'll be much easier for you to put together 
So I did put a frame around all of the house and the shelf. The shelf on the original one that I have in my kitchen, it does have a piece going across in the front and it's really, really hard to decorate. So I definitely wanted to leave that out on my project. But um, once I had all my frame pieces cut, like I said, I framed out the house the back of the shelf and the side and then as well as the wooden part so once i had all my pieces cut then i go in with my ink waverly chalk paint and a waverly brush and i did give all the pieces a distressed coat of that ink waverly chalk paint After I distressed all of the pieces, like the back pieces, as well as the shelves, I glued the back pieces to the house and the square with some wood glue, with some hot glue, I should say. Next, I glue on all of the pieces onto my shelf with some hot glue and wood glue. I did forget to mention also that when I cut and painted my frame pieces, I did leave each side in a pile so that I knew which would go where, if that makes sense. So for the front of the house, I left that in a pile and then the back of the back of the house, I left that in a pile. That way, once I glue it down, then they fit together perfectly. So I did just glue all of those pieces down with some hot glue. And then for the top of the house, I knew that these, I knew that this needed to be glued together in order to make the frame for the top of the house. So once it was together and I measured the perfect piece, then I did just mark where the front of it would show like to the front if that makes sense and then I just sanded those corners down that way once I glue this down to the top of the house you can't really see that dowel sticking up Once I had all my frame pieces glued on, then I was orig originally gonna flip this over and just add my hooks, but then I got the bright idea to add chicken wire to this shelf piece. So all I did was took my chicken wire from Dollar Tree, I measured it out and cut it down, and then I laid it to the back and used my electric stapler to staple this down. Now for the top piece of this little shelf, you wanna make sure that you're holding it up as you're stapling because that's just being held on with some hot glue. So I did wanna just mention that. And then once I had it stapled down, then I trimmed the excess once again with my wire cutters. To make the little hooks, I got this uh, 
I guess they're hangers from the automotive section at Dollar Tree. And I started by taking my large unfinished wooden beads. I took scissors to kind of open up that hole a little bit more. And then I stuck that down onto my hangers. And then to get these little hooks off, what I did was take my wire cutters. I kind of scored it in the spot where it would like go over the door. And then I just took my needle nose pliers and I bent that back and forth until it popped off. I believe I only had to do it three or four times and they did easily just pop off. Next, I went in with my Ink Waverly chalk paint, and at first I started painting this, and then I realized that I wanted to put some wood putty in the holes of the beads, so I stopped painting for a minute, and I did end up filling those holes, and then while they were drying, then I just painted the rest. Once I painted the rest, or I should say by the time I got finished painting the rest of these hooks, the wood putty was dried, so I just sanded down the excess, and then I finished painting the beads as well. Once all that was painted, then I went in with my white Waverly chalk paint, and I distressed the beads as well as the hooks. Next, in order to drill this onto the dowels, you first want to drill a hole out as well as in the hook itself and then screw them down to the back of this right in the middle. And then I also did screw two sawtooth hangers on either side. And you guys, look how amazing this turned out. I am so in love with it. I have this up in another part of my house. You guys, I'm like running out of spots. So I just kind of keep switching everything around. But this is an amazing piece and I cannot believe that with the help of my husband that I made it. Okay, you guys, for the last project, I take some parchment paper. This is a new trick that I learned. I'm sure this is probably the oldest trick in the book, but I honestly didn't even think about it until the other day. My daughter and I were baking cookies, and I got the bright idea to use parchment paper instead of those silicone mats because it's much easier to throw a piece of parchment paper away than to clean the silicone mats. Even though they do clean up really nicely, this is is just quicker and more convenient for me but I take eight of the square drawer pieces from Dollar Tree and two of the wooden crates that we used in the beginning of the video and I stain them all with my Jacobian I set those aside to dry and then I take eight of these chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree and the easiest way I found to pop these little um, clothespins off of them was to take my needle nose pliers and grab the bottom of it and then they just pop right off. Once I took off the clothespins then I just gave them a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I actually gave them two good coats of white Waverly chalk paint and then once the chalk paint was dry then I take my chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush all the way around the edges of each of these labels. Next, I take another chip brush, and I get a lot of questions about these. You guys, you can find these black handled ones in my Amazon store. They're actually by plaid as well. And then the other ones that I use that are the natural wood handled ones, I get those from plaidonline.com. So it just depends, but they're literally both amazing. So it's up to you. These black handled ones I have linked in my Amazon store. And if I can find a link for the short handled ones um, that are the natural wood, I will link those as well. They just come from Plaid Online, like I said. So like I said, I take my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush all the way around each of the boxes. And for the crates, I do dry brush 
around those as well but I also dry brush on the inside of those for the little drawers I draw I only dry brush the front of the drawer I don't worry about the inside of the drawer so I figured that I would just let you guys know in case you were wondering and then once I had all of those dry brushed then all I do is take my hot glue and I glue the labels to the front of these shapes now, if I can give you a little tip, if you can find eight of the heart drawers or eight of the butterfly drawers, I would definitely do that because these are not square. I don't know how they put these together, but it always amazes me how crooked they are. But I have found that if you get the same of the designs, then they're all cut the same, if that makes any sense. Once I had the labels on, then I had these label pulls from Amazon for a while now. So I figured that I would use these to pull these drawers out because some of the drawers don't fit right. So they're pretty hard to pull out and you definitely need something to um, grab onto to pull out the drawers. So I had these on hand. Once again, they'll be in my Amazon store in the description box. At first, I started to use like a tiny screwdriver, and then I realized that I could use my drill, so I used my drill on the rest of them. Now, in the original video that I did with Bargain Bethany, this was actually my last video that I did. Um, I had mentioned that you guys know that I'm extra, and I could see the edge of those labels, so I did just go in with a small paintbrush and my white Waverly chalk paint, and I just painted around the edges of the labels. Next, I take my wood glue and I glue all of these together. So I start with four boxes at the bottom. I glue those together, clamp them together to make sure that they hold nicely, and then I glue two of the crates, or two, I should say, I glued the crates down. Come on, Melissa, you're at the end. Get it together, girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, sorry you guys, I am tired. So I glued four at the bottom, the two crates, and then four at the top. Excuse me, you guys, please forgive me. Next, I wanted feet on these. I had put all of this together. I made all the decor on the inside, and then I was like, okay, well, I think this needs a little extra something. So I decided to put feet on them. I took these little square wooden pieces from Dollar Tree, and I glued two of them together four times with some hot glue. I then made up my own stain with some antique wax and some chalkboard paint along with some water until it was stain-like consistency and also until I got it the color that I wanted that matched the best with my little shelf uh, storage piece. I then just stained those little feet pieces and once those were dry, then I distressed them with some white Waverly chalk paint. Last but not least, I flipped my storage uh, storage decor piece, I'm going to call it. I don't really know what you want to call it. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys would call this. But I took some wood glue, like a dab of wood glue and a dab of hot glue. And I glued these feet down to each of the corners. And then that was it for this project, you guys. This seemed to be another fan favorite, which is why I included it in this video. So if you guys are still here, let me know in the comments down below you're still here or leave a red heart. That way I know that you guys enjoyed this content. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell and all so that way you're notified every single time I upload. As usual, leave your favorite project of all of these in the comments down below. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Also, share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it. Because those thumbs up and those uh, shares really help my channel to grow. Help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. And it also helps YouTube to recommend content that they think that you would like based on the videos that you interact with and like, comment 
all that good stuff. So I figured that I would mention it. Also, if nobody has told you today, you guys are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.